Hi, Steve here at the Backroom Comics Podcast. We're here at the first annual Jet City Comics Show uh, at the beautiful Seattle Center. I am sitting here with Agnes Garboska um, of uh, big one is Yumi and Zombie is the big one. Uh, how you doing? I'm doing wonderful. First time in Seattle and I'm loving it. Yeah? How's the con going? Actually really good. A good crowd of people, constant traffic, and everyone likes my stuff, which is totally cool. That's great. Um, so you are born in Poland. You live in Toronto, yeah. correct? How, I mean, how did uh, you get into comics just as, you know, get interested in comics? Uh, it was it at an early age or, or, you know, what, just tell us your story. Sure thing. <laughs> well, I love comics ever since I was a little kid. I was introduced to them at a young age. Maybe introduced to some comics I should not be reading at that age, but they're really cool anyways. <laughs> Violent, gory, but I Any started specifics? getting into X-Men. Um, I can't remember the first one, but I had this crazy pterodactyl standing on a pile of bones, and that was one of my very first comics. And I got introduced to X-Men, which was a lot friendlier. Nice. So I started reading them at a young age. I was a Marvel girl earlier on, and then I started liking DC Comics later. Mm -hmm. But when I was a kid, I didn't think I could work in comics, but I knew okay. I wanted to do something with art. It actually wasn't until about, I would say, five years ago that I started trying to pursue getting into comics because I realized, oh my god, you can make a living on this. So it was a passion of mine and I love telling a story, so it was just another medium for me to be able to tell stories. Mm -hmm. And I first started off as a pinup artist, then I started doing my cute style, which I liked a lot more than just working on pinups. Okay. And I got lucky that earlier this year I got to work for Marvel twice on Girl Comics and right. on the Spider-Ham 25th anniversary. Both were so much fun to do and I got my own web comics as well. Three of them actually, including Yumi and Zombie. Nice. So where did the idea for Yumi and Zombie come about? It's kind of a very interesting, uh, you're taking a genre that's so not family friendly and making it family friendly. So where did that, what made you, you decide that you wanted to do uh, an all-ages book about zombies. Well, it actually came around from my love of zombies. I okay. always loved zombies, when, even when I was a kid, but they scared the crap out of me. <laughs> I would watch a zombie movie, and I couldn't sleep for two to three weeks, and my mom's like, why do you do this to yourself? Mm -hmm. So I've always been a fan of just zombies in general. So as a kid, I'm like, one day I'm going to do something with zombies that a child can read and not be afraid of, maybe just, just a little afraid. So I came up with the concept Fear is of good. Yumi and Zombie, which is actually based on the, um, Olive and Otis are the two characters, and they're actually my dogs. Olive is the main character in the story, and okay. Otis is her dog. So they kind of take my little dog's personalities, and it's their journey through this world of zombies, and it's actually Olive's trying to find a cure for her mom, who she happened to wake up one morning, and her mom is a zombie trying to get her. So the whole story is about her trying to figure out how to cure her mom and her friends, and she's just there with her little dog on a scooter. Okay. <laughs> Damn. That sounds great. <laughs> um, so how do you make the zombies themselves uh, all ages? Because you know, I, I, you know, you watch like the footage from the new Walking Dead TV show, Which and it's awesome. it looks great, and I'm really excited. Um, but how do you make the zombies all age? Like not too gory or, or creepy. That was tricky at first. So basically my zombies are like somebody who has never once brushed their teeth or combed their hair. They're just very messy. Their clothes are a little ripped off, but there's like no blood. So that was the main thing of Yumi and Zombie. There's actually going to be little to no blood in it, okay. and it's still a zombie story. Right. So I just taken zombies. I taken the things that parents hate about them and added the stuff that kids love, which are just scary creatures chasing people around. Mm. So I'm having a little fun with that, and their eyes are very dilated. All you see is this big white blotch for their eyes, really bad teeth, very messy, and just always roaming around, mm -hmm. doing what zombies do best. <laughs> brains. Yeah. Going for brains. Um, so how did you get into the, this? I mean, you have a very distinct style with, um, with you know, the, the very, uh, like you said, the cutesy. Um, how did you get, I mean, what, I guess, what were your, your, some of your biggest influences when you started, uh, when you started working on art and such? Um, well, Chris Bocello is one of my favorite artists. Ever since I was a kid, I actually love, love, loved his work. Okay. So earlier on, I sometimes tried to draw like Jim Lee and Chris Bocello, but it wasn't my thing. But of course, it's how you learn to draw comics, copying other people that you right. admire. And then 
I started doing my layouts actually when I thumbnail my layouts they look very similar to my mini style so when I was doing my pinups and I was working on a more mature comic but I did my layouts in a cute style it just helped me set up the page and I remember someone going hey that looks really cool so I'm like all right cool so maybe I should try it out so my boyfriend was like why don't you try to do some prints in this style and see how it goes because you enjoy doing it a lot more than your pinups so I'm like I gave it a try and it was a success everyone was raving about it so I'm like you know what I'm gonna continue doing this it makes me happy it makes others happy and it's just a fun Western meets anime style which is the fusion of the two to too comic-y for anime people and not anime enough for the anime people. So right. it's just right down the middle and it makes me happy and that's all that's that cool. matters. That's so so is so would do you mean zombie be more of a because it's got a very like children's book thing to it. Would you still would you say it's more of a children's book in the, or more of a comic? I would say it is more of a comic because it is told in the comic format, mm -hmm. but it's a comic for kids. So it's okay. kid-friendly, it has a lot of jokes that kids and parents can understand, it has movie references like the prelude ends with the words, I will be back, which we all know where that came from. Right. So I just like throwing in pop culture, things I love, and hopefully kids and parents can enjoy it together. Okay. Um, one thing that I, I, uh, I read your little bit, your little part in the girl comics um, and something that I, I thought was I mean you're putting your own stamp on you know these on like the Marvel characters um, you know the Fantastic Fours or Mr. Fantastic's They're kids. kids yeah are there any other um, you know mainstream superheroes or mainstream care comic book characters that you would like to put your um, your art style and kind of your family friendly cutesy uh, style to? Actually, yes. I would love to do a mini universe involving all the Justice League characters, like your Batman, Superman, uh -huh. Wonder Woman. Um, I read a Batman, uh, Batman Superman comic where it was two issues and it all took place in this mini universe. And this was already after I started doing my mini style. I'm like, oh my god, if DC would continue doing this, I would totally buy it. Even better, I, I would draw it. <laughs> but like Tiny Titans, for example, with Franco and Art is one of my favorite books and I read it and it's so witty and they're actually really good friends of mine and I love what they do so if I could do like a DC mini universe where like the crime fighting and little mini joker running around I would be in heaven <laughs> <laughs> that sounds awesome I would totally buy that um, so I guess to wrap things up um, so you have you me and zombie which you self-published correct, correct. Um, do you have anything else uh, that you're working on that you can talk about um, yeah, actually, my web comics, there's three of them online. One of them is Yumi and Zombie, and it's telling the story right from the beginning, from the first days that okay. this whole zombie thing takes place. There's another story called Waking Up Abby, which is about a girl named Abby who has the luck, or not luck, to wake up every single morning with a new ability. So the first okay. story is her being able to stick to everything, which everything she touches basically just sticks on to her. <laughs> so she's trying to get by a day of school with everything sticking to her. And the last one's called Imagination Station, which out of three, I would say is the most kid-friendly, youngest readers, because it's about three girls who imagine their entire world as a giant space adventure. Oh, okay. And that's all online on agnesgarboska.com. Cool. Good. Um, it's interesting. I mean, you. I mean, you're so focused on the, uh, you know, the, the all ages stuff. Um, do you feel that more comics should? Because I think now comics are really centered towards. You know the older audiences and are very you know you know there's lots of violence and such um do you feel that comics should be more pushing to be more all ages and kid friendly um i totally do like take tiny times for example it won an award and it's a kids comic which parents can enjoy too so if they take that idea of doing a comic for kids that parents can enjoy with their kids i think it would bring more kids to comic cons because if you look at comic shows it's almost all adults and mm -hmm. adults bring their kids but if you look at anime crowds for example they're almost all kids and teenagers so if we could get that crowd like in comics okay. that would be a whole new market just to make money off of and I just love having kids come to me at shows like I just got swapped by my friends kids and I love that I love seeing kids expressions when they know what every superhero is so I say yeah totally more kids stuff is right up my alley cool well, um, 
Thank you for sitting with us, Agnes Garboska. Um, check out You, Me, and Zombie. Uh, I've seen the art, I haven't read it yet, but I've seen the art and it's uh, absolutely fantastic. Thank you. And um, check it out. Uh, you can check us out at the backroomcomicspodcast.com, uh, Facebook, Twitter, and we're also on iTunes and Zoom. Um, thanks for watching. <laughs>